I suppose they're really starting today. I think we've just had a little bit of acclimatising up north and now we'll be able to get down here, get into it. It looks an amazing setup, so I think the guys are pretty excited about getting back into it. Have you got any sort of injury concerns or anything at the moment, or things looking okay? No, it's looking pretty good. I think we're keeping an eye on Josh Hazelwood, as has been mentioned, um, just to see how he gets through these next couple of sessions. But it feels like everyone's targeting this, this obviously huge test match, and i um, pretty excited for it. Have you been sort of paying any attention? I know you've got the India match first, but have you been paying any attention to what England's preparations are at the moment and the mood inside the camp there? Yeah, of course. I think everyone will keep a close eye on the Irish test um, any time. A team that you're coming up against, you want to get an eye on them, and obviously some new players that some of our guys probably haven't seen before, and the likes of Josh Tung. So I think that'll that'll be of some interest for for everyone within the group. The big sort of word on everyone's lips at the moment is Basball. Do you have any thoughts on that and the way England are playing and their new style, um, and how does that affect your preparation? I think yeah. I mean, irrespective of the style, they're playing winning cricket, and I think that's the thing that everyone gravitates towards. So the fact that they've played so well over an extended period of time. Um, is what's been so impressive and I think probably like Andrew, Brendan's the same that he wouldn't want to make it the, the attention about himself, it's just it's, he's got this uh, moniker going for him now um, but I think it's that's Brendan for since he came out of the womb he's pretty positive. Absolutely and uh, Ben Stokes has said he's determined to get himself ready for the, the full test uh, against, um, against you guys um, on the 16th of June, do you think that that will affect how you guys prepare and if he, if he isn't fully involved? Uh, I don't think it will affect how we prepare, but we, I think we'll be preparing for him to be at his normal, um, one of the top all-rounders in world cricket. So I think we, we know how much he brings to the table as an all-rounder. It's like Cameron Green for us, offering that balance, um, the ability to come in and be a, an aggressive weapon, um, along with his, his batting, which has been exceptional. So I think any team wants their all-rounder up and running because it makes everything else run so smoothly. Cameron Green's joined up with the squad uh, today, Daniel. Good to see him here. Yeah, he came came in yesterday. Sorry, so. Agree with me, team. I contact here. Oh, sorry, sorry, man. Uh, I'm thinking of you when I answer this. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, he, it's great to have him back. Obviously, just like we mentioned about Ben Stokes, he offers such so much to the team, and he's coming off, um, you know, a great series in India for us, and then obviously on the back of a very successful IPL. So he, he brings so much to the table, and it's great that he's got some confidence. Hopefully, he gets a little bit of a rest before he can get back into it. Um, but he's he's a huge part of the side. How about um, I saw Sean Abbott as well? You've got Denise, is that kind of a, a full group? Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it's nice to have those guys who are so so close to the team. Uh, obviously, playing county cricket and, and playing exceptionally well. So to to have them come into the team um, and just give a little bit of energy to the group, I think everyone's excited to see them. And knowing that six Test matches um, in a six week period is is incredibly tough ask on the fast bowlers. So to have those guys floating around makes a big difference. So what are the next couple of days look like then in terms of you know no, this will probably have been the window where you might. Yeah, big big day today, um, followed by um, probably a more batting focused day tomorrow, and then another big day. So we're trying to, I suppose, prepare as we normally would. You think of the the India build up and we, where we went to Bangalore, um, try to simulate as much as we can what we can expect. But the majority of the guys, it's, it's time on feet, um, getting the bowling loads up and going from there. Andrew said one of the big learnings from India was um, being able to take the pace out of the game after the first couple of tests, things started to rattle along probably a bit too quickly. How, how does that actually work? How do you get that mindset changed inside the dressing room when things are spiralling? Uh, I mean, I think any team I've been involved in, that's one of the hardest things to, to either anticipate or to deal with in the time because there's so many moving parts. And I think it's just an acknowledgement that it's happening and whether you can address it with the ingoing batsmen, um, with the batsmen that are about to come in. I think that's the only measures you have. I think it's quite a unique scenario and India brings that out, particularly those style of wickets that we played on. So I don't anticipate the game speeding up as much as it would there in England, but I think you'll have pockets of it where you'll either be up against it or you'll be the one on top and how you can either embellish it or, or sort of um, pull back I think is, is the key and, and all it is is communication. Is it the way England play that is a chance of is that they like to be a bit more fast forward now so if it what happened here? I think, it, I think the, sh the stress points is around the losing of wickets and I think that's where the, you can get a little bit insular, um, the game can feel like it's just you against um, 11 other guys the flip side is, and I think in the field, you can. it's easier to take your time if, if they are being aggressive, if they are taking the game to us. Whereas batting, it just feels like it snowballs and gets on top of you. So I think the concern would be from a batting perspective rather than a bowling perspective. And is the trick there just recognising when those moments come in a game? 100%. I think 
for us as a bowling group, we can look back to um, Dick Weller and the Sri Lankan series where we had them 5 for 80 and he came and took the game away from us. And that's one of those key points where we shouldn't allow, we, we can't allow that to happen because the game gets away from you quickly, even though you think you're on top. And I think that's where England is so good as well, that they keep coming. So you've got to anticipate that and, and, and not back off, but also recognise that the situation is going on. Does a test against India set you up nicely for the Ashes or would you have preferred quite a gentle look? <laughs> um, no, I, th I think it does. I think, you know, ask me again on the back of these sort of four days of prep, but I think there's a real excitement that we have the ability to play one of the best teams in the world um, in such a crucial game, and that should set us up well for, for the Ashes series as well, because it's just six test matches of high intensity, so I, I don't think you could ask for anything more. On the India team, Daniel, I mean, you, you played a lot of cricket at the Oval there. Do you expect it to take a lot of spin? Do you expect India to play two spinners? Uh, we, we have been debating that. Um, I think obviously Jadeja will play because of the batting that he brings to the table and how successful uh, he's been in that, that number six position. Um, and then the question will be around the, the fourth Seymour rounder and, and Takor and, and then obviously Ashwin. So pretty good choices. Obviously Ashwin is an incredible bowler um, and he'd be first choice in most teams. Um, but just with their combination it may lead to that. But I think we expect the oval to Behave, it always behaves, or it's it's a good wicket, but it can offer a lot for spinners as the game goes on. And Steve Smith's had a very high-profile stint in, in county cricket. I was just wondering if what the reports back have been. You know, he even played against Josh Tung, which m many Australians won't have done. Uh, I haven't haven't spoken to him about yet. I, th I just know he's excited that he had that brief period of time. Seems like he thoroughly enjoyed it and just ready to get back into camp. So I can't really offer too much more than that. What about Brendan? Have you been in, much, in contact much with? Brendan? Yeah, I mean, we still try and stay in touch. Um, obviously, he's a Busy, busy man, so am I. So it'll be nice to catch up with him when we see him throughout the series. Picking up on the Cameron Green stuff, like he's, you mentioned kind of all rounders before and the importance of that. And he's coming off probably not ideal preparation for the six test series. Is that a fair characterisation? And how do you kind of manage it? I think we just sort of have to look through it in a different lens that any cricket is preparation now. And obviously, he's doing work in the background to make sure that his bowling loads are up, that he's actually ready for test cricket. So I think. Now we, we look at it as if you're involved in high intensity, high class cricket, that's, we're happy with that because it means that you're playing cricket. The hardest thing for guys is coming out of nothing and that, that, that'll be the challenge for, for a couple of guys that they've had an extended break um, and how they get up to speed as quickly as possible. With, with Cameron, I think he's just been playing so much cricket that he'll be fine.